What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So the other day, Nintendo unveiled a new subscription service based around the hardware for the Switch that caught me a little off guard because the pricing is surprisingly good. We're gonna go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about new games that have been added to the Nintendo Switch online service that are actually really good. And we're also going to be talking about Sucker Punch and Sony as they did shoot down quite a few rumors from leakers online around some of their more beloved franchises. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. Helps out a ton. And if you're new to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're going to start today with... The Silent Hill. It's it's been an ongoing saga, hasn't it? With with all of this, the the rumored games in development for Silent Hill remakes, brand new ones, and apparently they decided to show people at an investors meeting. Take a look at this on Twitter. This, from what I could tell, the first time it was really posted up was from Rebs Gaming, saying new Silent Hill game from Konami revealed a date and teaser trailer have been leaked. Here's the teaser video and the reveal date is July. 12th. Apparently this was making the rounds on a Japanese forum and then it was pulled down, but I mean the video looks it just looks fake. I, that's that's the best way I can I can describe it. it. Looks something like you would just do in an After Effects uh program very quickly and just throw the date in there, maybe be a template that's like for sale on on the storefront or something. I just don't know why you would show up to an in investors briefing if you're Konami and just have this teaser play when they're probably there to hear about the new Pachinko machine, not what ha what's happening with a new Silent Hill game. Who, who knows? Maybe this was the teaser for that new Silent Hill Pachinko machine. Hey, July 12th isn't too far away, we'll see. Also, we had talked previously around the God of War situation. It's got absolutely out of control, and we did have Sony Santa Monica release a statement on Twitter, which we can see. This post up saying, every single person at Santa Monica Studio is working to create a game that we're proud of, one that we hope you will enjoy playing once released. Our fans inspire us, and we understand the passion and desire for more information, but that passion should not be toxic, nor come at the expense of any human being's dignity. Let's celebrate our community by treating each other, every gamer and developer alike, with respect. I still believe God God of War Ragnarok is coming out this year. It just sounds like it's going to be coming out in November, and the date has shifted a bit behind the scenes, even from September, a few months later, but they're still shooting at least for this year, and it's just kind of a waiting game at this point for when they're ready to reveal that release date with a big trailer, blog post, special dishes. The whole thing is, is apparently going to be happening here, hopefully in the coming weeks. Supposedly there was a release or re release date reveal set for June 30th, but something pushed it back. So it's got a little bit more patience. It sounds like we're at least getting close to finding out when God of War Ragnarok is coming out. Oh, and I did say before I would tell you when the Knights Old Republic 2 game was patched on the Switch to fix. It was essentially a game-breaking bug, or at least a bug that would keep you from progressing further in the title. And we can see this over on the Aspire website saying, Hot Fix Patch Notes for KOTOR 2 on the Switch. It has been released now. That was on June 30th. And this Hot Fix addresses our top player reported issues. And they have the full list below, which address things like a crash that would occur after certain cutscenes, address an issue where the game would crash on certain mid-late game saves, and... We seem to at least be in a good spot now with this game so you can play all the way through it, which is good because the game itself is, is a great one to pick up on the Switch at that price. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a game we've had for a while, but it's, it's aged actually pretty well overall. And since you can pick up the first one and the second one on the Switch and play through them, I think it's compl completely worth picking up now. So just wanted to give you guys an update around that situation. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo's new subscription service, it's currently available just in Japan, but people are really hoping that this finds its way out of Japan to the rest of the world because it's actually a pretty good deal. We're, let's take a look here. This is over on their website. It's titled Wide Care from Nintendo. You can either pay monthly, which is 200 yen or about $1.50 per month, or 2,000 yen per year, which is about $15. Wide Care, according to them, is a flat rate repair warranty service that can be subscribed to at any time. And they go over what it covers, and of course that means the Switch, the Switch Lite, Joy-Con controllers, which I still think Nintendo should just be covering Joy-Con controllers when it comes to drifting issues anyway, but I mean, it's part of the Switch package, so it's on there. The dock, AC adapters, nothing with the HDMI cable because 
And let's face it, with the HDMI cable, just going to probably buy another one. You're not going to really send it in for repair. But they do mention you can claim up to six repairs with two of those even just being a full replacement of the console, this being up to $738 in repair costs. And it, again, surprising to see this at $15 a year since it also covers the, the shipping costs, which may actually be that much, right? But the fact that it goes into even user error, so like water damage, if you just like drop it in the sink or something there, if you just drop it in general and it, and it crashes down to the floor and maybe a Joy-Con flies off and it won't attach anymore or the system itself, the screen is broken, um, it apparently covers all of that. Uh, like I said, up to two full replacements for the console. And what this reminds me of is something like Apple Care, where you would pay a, a monthly fee and it would cover basically the entire iPhone. And if anything happened to it, you walk in and they just give you another one, essentially. Uh, that is much more expensive than $15 a year, though, through Nintendo for your Switch. And I, I think that's one of the biggest reasons right now it's just in Japan, because there is a very, there's a very concentrated number of Switch systems, over 25 million just in Japan. Of course, that is Nintendo's home country. They uh, that they uh, operate out of. So it's probably easier for them to really keep things under control and manage things better there than if they took it worldwide and offered it everywhere. But even so, does this really make sense for Nintendo financially? I mean, in their mind, they want to make sure people, after they've already bought their Switch, are sticking with it. Because this is a long-term game right now for Nintendo, since they are going to be working with their Nintendo account system, and they want you in their ecosystem like everyone else does. And I'm sure there is that thought process of, oh, if your Switch breaks, you might just not buy another one and just move away from this ecosystem that Nintendo has worked to build up with subscription services and everything else. And of course, I'm sure Nintendo, like a lot of insurance companies would be, uh, just hoping you don't need it and you just don't use it and the $15 for the year that you pay them is just it just goes to them and that's kind of it but still the fact that you can just throw your switch out a window if I guess if you want another one and send it in and get one for $15 a year technically it'll cover you twice for the entire system that's pretty good. I'm sure Nintendo is also pulling parts out of the Switch after they replace it and dividing it up, and they're able to use those for other ones. There's a whole thing you can do, just kind of divvying up parts and moving them around to fix other systems. And it does make me wonder a bit more about those raw materials after seeing this service get announced officially from Nintendo, since they would have probably been stockpiling parts in order to make this work initially. I don't know if like that's the entirety of the raw materials being so high in terms of cost, but they certainly would be working to stockpile to kind of hold this service up. Hey, either way though, it certainly looks like a good service to sign up for if you're in Japan. Otherwise, you just gotta kind of cross fingers and hope that it, it actually leaves Japan and goes worldwide. Next up, let's talk about some new games that are now in the Nintendo Switch Online service. These being new Sega Genesis games. And the way it works with Genesis games from what I've noticed, they just announce it and it's there right away. Like it's it, immediate. They don't do the thing where they build up to its eventual release. Nope, here's four games and they're just in the service. And we can take a look here. This over on Nintendo of America's a Twitter account saying four classic Sega Genesis games have just been made available for Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack members. Technically, it's more than four games, which we'll talk about here in a second, but let's start from the top. We have Comic Zone, Target Earth, Zero Wing, which by the way, Zero Wing is, is the, the game that kind of spawned that meme, all your bases are belong to us. So, hey, if you want to see that in real time, you can fire the game up and check it out for yourself. Then we have Mega Man The Wily Wars. I mostly want to talk about the two games that I'm very familiar with and, re and remember fondly, actually, from back in the day, that being Comic Zone and then Mega Man. Let's start with Comic Zone, which is a brutally difficult game that probably was responsible for a lot of Sega Genesis games being, or Sega Genesis controllers being broken back in the day. But it was such a memorable game in the sense that it kind of has this fourth wall breaking sense. You're, you, you play as a character in a comic book and you'll even break through panels, cut up the paper and all these different things while the artist in front of you is drawing different different enemies and obstacles in front of you. But a lot of people who have played this remember the first couple of panels where you kick the enemy through one of the frames and break it. It's, it's just something that's always stuck in my mind. And the only issue with the game is it's just so hard, I don't know anyone who had beaten it back in the day. So... 
Might be worth going back now that we have Rewind and all this other stuff and just seeing if, if we can get through it. The other one being Mega Man The Wily Wars. This is technically three Mega Man games, so it's the first three from the NES redone in 16-bit visuals. It was released on that Genesis Mini, and we've had reproduction carts as well. But this is a big release because, I mean, it, the convenience factor. It's just there on your Switch. And when you beat all three of the Mega Man games, there's like a, a exclusive tower that opens up that you get to play through for this game. There were, were some slowdown issues back in the day on the Genesis because we did get it in the U.S., through the Sega channel, but not as a physical release. You have to go to other parts of the world to import it to do that. However, I assume that that slowdown issue would have been corrected here on the Nintendo Switch online release, but definitely check out Mega Man The Wily Wars. I'm sure there are many Mega Man fans who have not even had a chance to play this one, and it is really cool, yes, to see the, the Mega Man games from the NES redone in 16-bit visuals, but also get a shot at that exclusive tower at the end. But hey, Pretty good update, I would say, here for the Genesis collection uh, with Nintendo Switch Online. Definitely gonna check out Comic Zone, though. I wanna see if I can get a bit further this time. Next up, let's talk about Sony, the PlayStation 5, and Sucker Punch. Now, Sucker Punch released one of my favorite games for the PlayStation 4, that being Ghost of Tsushima. It's, it's a great title, especially for someone like me who enjoyed games like Tenshu and Way of the Samurai. I mashed it all up into this very, uh, very interesting looking open world. But there have been a lot of rumors around what's next for Sucker Punch, and they decided to show up and just crush everyone's dreams. We can see this posted up over on the Sucker Punch website, saying, as we approach 25 years since Sucker Punch first opened, we're proud to look back on the legacy of characters and stories we've created from Rocket Robot on Wheels. Wow, you really gotta go back to like the, what's that, 99? I think that was with Ubisoft even, wow. Uh, to Sly Cooper and Infamous, and most recently, Ghost Tsushima. As our games continue to grow in scale and complexity, they require the full attention of our studio. With our focus on our current project, we have no plans to revisit Infamous or Sly Cooper right now, and no other studio is currently working on projects related to this franchise either. These characters are very special and near and dear to our hearts. So while we never say never to reopening those doors down the road, for now, there are no infamous or Sly Cooper games in development. The next paragraph kind of gives us an idea maybe as to why they made the statement. We know many people still play these games even today, so we'll be performing maintenance on infamous to UGC servers soon to move them to a new home that will keep them up and running a bit longer. We'll eventually need to sunset these, but want to keep them running for as long as possible for players who are still active. They also mentioned that Cole's Legacy DLC from Infamous Second Son, they're gonna work to move that to the PlayStation Store just in case anyone wants to pick it up since it was only part of the collector's edition. So I assume this statement went out because they were gonna be updating Infamous and we already see the rumors running rampant right now around a Sly Cooper game, so who knows what that would have caused with Infamous there. And it just appears that Sucker Punch has moved on from Ghost Tsushima and is working on something brand new maybe? I, that's the thing I'm having a hard time figuring out is what's next for Sucker Punch. Would they do a sequel to Ghost Tsushima? Would they make a brand new intellectual property? Well, it doesn't seem like they're going to be going back and revisiting their older franchise with Sly Cooper or Infamous. The thing I would like to see about those titles, though, is just like a, a collection or a remaster of Sly Cooper titles since they're still just stuck on the PS3 and the Vita, interestingly enough, and Infamous 1 and 2 are just stuck on the PlayStation 3, although I guess you can play it through cloud streaming, so that's, that's always fun. I mean, at least we have a Second Son that you can go to, and it was even part of the PlayStation Plus collection um, for the PS5. But that's the biggest thing. If they're not going to make any new Infamous games, it'd be nice if they put a porting studio on just some of the older titles for Infamous and Sly Cooper, and at least move them up to the PlayStation 5. Otherwise, though, we'll talk a bit more about what Sucker Punch could be doing in the poll later on. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new patent that was found from PlayStation that seems to talk about PlayStation 3 peripherals working with the PlayStation 5. Take a look at this. This was spotted by GameRant, who says Sony may be working to make old peripherals compatible with modern PlayStation consoles. New patent filed by Sony indicates an emulation of legacy PlayStation peripherals like the iToy, which I think that's just the PlayStation I that they pointed out here from the PS3, and PlayStation Move may be in the works. So here's the diagram that, that was posted up. And I mean, it is clearly a PS3 considering the cell processor is pointed out, the XD RAM, the RSX, and then a number of different peripherals on the left side. As you can see, the legacy card reader is even pointed out, which is interesting. I mean, they have that and then they have even like the media 
remote. But taking a look at the patent itself, it's titled Systems and Methods for Converting a Legacy Code into an Updated Code. It was recently made public just a couple of days ago, and that's one of the reasons it has just now been picked up. But looking through the patent, I don't think this is describing anything around making these different peripherals like the PlayStation Eye work with the PS5. This just looks like more work from Sony for making PS3 games function correctly through cloud streaming and maybe even emulation because there is a lot of a lot of uh, talk in this patent around having these older commands legacy uh, designs work through like a translation layer almost on the PS5 or just uh, current systems as described. So for example, a game may call for like the PlayStation Move or, or some other peripheral that might not be available, but the system will at least know to move along from that because we do still have games that have optional controls for PlayStation Move, but you can still use like a controller or anything else there. It just seems like Sony is still working in the background, kind of as you'd expect, by the way, since that is, uh, while it is just streaming, it's still a big part of their PlayStation Plus premium service. It just appears that they're working to make the PS3 more compatible as they go along through emulation, yes, and that seems to be cloud streaming for now, but I kind of think Sony is realizing there will come a time where they can't keep holding up these specific builds that they have in servers, in their data centers with these servers, because they are built off of that cell processor. They had worked, I believe with IBM, to just create custom chips that basically ran on that older architecture. That way they wouldn't have to come up with a native emulator, emulator or anything for current platforms. But Eventually, those systems will break down and who knows, they might not be able to fabricate more of those chips and they'll kind of be forced into it. I think it's possible they're just preparing for that future as we did hear from uh, people like Jeff Grubb that there have at least been internal talks and some preliminary work done on a native emulator. And you know what? If they get that done and you can just play PS3 games I'm not saying you put a disc in and it'll play it, but like you can buy it from the shop and you don't have to stream it or just claim it on their PlayStation Plus premium service. I think for a lot of people, that service will become much more valuable then, especially if that PS3 library is built out when that does happen. And remember, PlayStation Now has had some pretty serious changes when it comes to uh, its overall infrastructure and idea. Originally, it's supposed to be just a streaming service, and eventually they allowed you to just download games, which didn't seem like that was the original plan for it, but they changed things up, shifted gears a bit, and here you are now being able to download a vast majority of the titles. So maybe in like four or five years, we can look back on the service as having a big shift when a native PS3 emulator shows up. We'll, we'll see about that. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, what would you want Sucker Punch to do next? Ghost Tsushima 2 leads the way at 31%. New original game, 29%. Sly Cooper at 23%. And then a new Infamous at 17%. I will admit I'm a little disappointed that we may not see another Infamous game for a long time, if ever, because that is a series that I think could do some, they could do some really cool stuff with the current technology from the PS5, the SSD, ray tracing, and, and those kinds of things. But I'm thinking about a sequel to Ghost Tsushima and it almost feels like Ghost Tsushima is just its own contained story. And I don't know if we need a sequel to it. And the fact that Sucker Punch went from Sly Cooper to Infamous to then giving us something like Ghost Tsushima, I'd like to see what's next for them. What is the next big new IP they can come up with? Because clearly they're very talented. And when you go, hey, you come up with whatever you want, they come up with something like Ghost Tsushima. Yeah, let's see what else they have. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Akira saying, I love how that fan managed to make so many people talk about F-Zero and even developers comment on it. It's also reported that Miyamoto and Takahashi smiled when one of the games was mentioned, implying one of them might actually be in production. They might, might also have been surprised that someone brought up something like Baton Katos or something there. But, you know, I've wondered that. If you're sitting on the, on the board seats and you're next to Miyamoto, Takahashi, and all of these people, right? And you know in the back of your mind that there is a new F-Zero in production and that it's gonna blow people away when they eventually see it, but it's still like a year or two off and someone just asks you about it, it would be kind of tough to not crack a smile and be like, give us, give us a little bit of time. Obviously not gonna say, 
oh yeah, this new F-Zero game is definitely in production, but I have wondered that, like, if you were up there, would you be able to hold back a smile if they asked you about that uh, that that intellectual property they're going to bring back, like F-Zero, you have this really cool new idea, and you're excited to show people. That would be tough. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, whether it's Nintendo's new repair subscription service. If it ends up being offered worldwide, would you sign up for it at that price? And you think you'd end up using it. And then also, what about Sucker Punch? Shutting down all of the rumors and leaks around Sly Cooper and Infamous, and then these new Sega Genesis games that are added to Nintendo Switch Online. Are you going to try them out? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.